Endless Summer Vacation, the newest album from Miley Cyrus. It has been just over two years since her latest release, Plastic Hearts, uh, kind of approaching more towards two and a half years, actually, which was a record where she embraced more rock influence and fusions of different rock genres. And that was pretty cool. I didn't love it, but I didn't mind it either. This record right here also does take some influence from the rock genre while also melding other genres such as different kinds of pop, uh, dance music, electronic, disco even, and there's even surprisingly a country cut on here, which I guess is actually not that surprising considering some of Miley's other solo work. And I don't want to keep comparing this to Plastic Hearts throughout this review. In fact, I'm probably not going to do it anymore. But I do just want to say that I do like Miley's vocals a lot more on this project here because a big thing leading up to Plastic Hearts was that she had gotten vocal surgery and it was a new voice and all that stuff. But I really kind of just found her vocals to be hit or miss throughout that thing. But here in, in the summer vacation, I'm really impressed. I think throughout almost the entire thing, her vocals are sounding great. Flowers is the first track on this album. It was the lead single as well. It came out about a couple months ago. It's been a huge song ever since, debuted on number one, which I think is partially due to it just being a new Miley Cyrus song, but also all this talk about it being about her past relationship with Liam Hemsworth and even a somewhat response to the song When I Was Your Man by Bruno Mars, if you look closely at the lyrics to that song and to this song here, which I honestly find to be much more interesting than the whole Liam thing. In general, she seems to be just talking about how she can live independently and live a single life successfully and you know not need all these other things needing another partner in her life. I enjoy the song. I enjoy the disco influence sound that it takes as well. And this may be a stretch, but it does kind of remind me of Gloria Gaynor's I Will Survive. It has sort of a, a funny standoffish, ironic quality to it, I would say. The next track, Jaded, takes on more of a psychedelic pop, indie pop, indie rock influence with the production here, which I think is nice. I think it's a very nice sounding song. And she seems to be talking about a past relationship and regrets that she had with it. We get a little more rock sounds with the track Rose Colored Lenses. I like the sort of metaphor in the song of wearing rose colored lenses, but really it just being sort of a distraction from reality and from your actual life and what's going on there. I will say that there was a bit of redundancy when we get to this track and after this track has ended, we've heard three songs so far that I think have all been good, but haven't really had a lot of variety, at least topically speaking. And so I was sort of wondering where the album was gonna go at this point. But to, re but to reiterate, I do think it's a nice track and I also do like the weird sort of distorted saxophone solo that we get towards the end. It's kind of sporadic and all over the place, but it's pretty cool. As I alluded earlier, yes, there is a country song on here as well. That's what follows the track Thousand Miles featuring Brandy Carlisle, who I like in the song. I do honestly wish that she was in it more, but I think her part is nice. She provides some good backing vocals. I also do quite like the instrumentation here. It is country, but there's a little bit of blend with some electronic sounds as well. I also really enjoy the line, instead of hanging up, I hang my head. Before that, she says, I pick up the phone and I call back home but all I get is a dial tone. I think there's just some good imagery created there that stood out to me the first time I heard it. You is a big highlight off of here for me. I'm really enjoying Miley's singing on here. It's a little bit slower, a little more sensual, I would say. And the instrumentation taking influence from the blues genre, it's quite nice. It's also a little bit slower and dramatic. Handstand has a bit of a weird start to it. There are these dramatic synths that we hear in a spoken word part delivered by Miley herself. From here on, the production actually gets pretty experimental and there's lots of layers and it has a very spacey sound to it. And I actually really enjoy the sound of this track overall. However, I do find some of the lyrics on this to be kind of awkward. Uh, it's the, there's the idea of her doing a handstand, but at one point she mentions that her other hand is busy doing something else, which insinuates sort of a, a sexual act that is taking place while she's doing a handstand. Just uh, kind of weird. I just I, I just think this the lyrics are in this are a little bit weird. The track that follows this is River. It is the second official single from this album, and this also takes some more themes of sex and sexual acts. There's the line 
that is repeated about how you know you flow like a river the way you can go so long you know no. the production here takes on some dance influence as i had said before that comes up on this album which is kind of cool but i'm just not really too into the song itself i don't really care for the lyrics overall it's not a track that i'm too into violent chemistry is yet another song that takes on some of the same subject matter which i'm just kind of getting tired of at this point i'm also really not into the vocal doubling that takes place here with miley's vocals it reminds me of what eminem has done like in the past maybe decade or so some of his songs doubling the vocals for this really strange dramatic effect that i'm just not into muddy feet is actually somewhat of an interesting track there are sort of hints in the lyrics about a partner that has been cheating on miley or whoever the song is being sung the perspective being sung from and that's sort of what the muddy feet is sort of a, a metaphor for instrumentally speaking there's a bit of a trap and pop fusion going on here which I'm not in love with, honestly, but I at least commend for it being something different and unique in this album. I also do wish that there was just more Sia here, similar to the Brandy Carlisle feature. It's like, I don't mind her when she appears, but I kind of just want more. It hardly feels like a feature. Wildcard is an okay song. There's a decent sort of indie sound that she's going for here, but really this album is starting to lose me at this point where 10 tracks in, and I've liked about half of them and disliked the other half. So it's really kind of leaning on these last couple of tracks for the album to get saved for me. Thankfully, the next track, Island, is actually a good song, in my opinion. I am liking this one. I'm liking the sound of it. Um, you know, it kind of coincides with the lyrics being in an island, being on a, in a paradise. It's sort of a tropical feel to it. A little bit of disco influence as well, I would say. And I like the lyric that Miley lingers on throughout this song, asking the question of if she's stranded on an island or if this is paradise where she is. Wonder Woman is the final track on this theme, and it sort of hints at what it's about, which is woman, strong woman, courageous woman. Cool. I don't mind it. I don't mind the subject matter here. Um, there's a kind of nice piano composition going on here as well. Nice singing from Miley. I just find it to be a little bit bland, a little bit generic, kind of has a generic uplifting nature to it. It's certainly, I think, a good song but just not one that I personally like that much or get much out of. And that is Endless Summer Vacation. That is the entire album there. I've gone through, I think, all the tracks for that one. A bit of a mixed bag for me, at least in terms of this amount of songs that I liked and disliked. I would say it's very front-loaded. Like, nearly all of the good songs, in my, my opinion, come in the first half of the album. And nearly all of the sneakers come in the second half. The best songs on here, I think, are really great and do show the potential that this project could have. And I could honestly see myself liking it more as time goes on. Uh, tracks like Handstand or Muddy Feet being examples of ones that I do like some of the ideas that are going on there. But I'm just not completely won over by the songs themselves. Uh, Wonder Woman, I would say, is another one that would place in that category. But overall, just kind of a decent album, kind of similar to the way I felt about Plastic Hearts. I, you know, certainly do wish I liked it more, wish it was better, but it could be a lot worse as well. It's a positive album, positive experience for me with this album. Thumbs up. Uh, more specifically, I'd give it a 6.5 out of 10. But what do you think of this album? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Do you have any favorite tracks? I would probably say You is my favorite track on here. If I was forced to pick one, that would probably be the one that i choose. But of course, I have my other favorite tracks listed in the description down below. If you want to look at that, uh, feel free to. Also, a link to the album if you want to listen to it on YouTube. But of course, it's on other streaming platforms. I'm sure there's a physical release for it as well if you're old-fashioned. I'm curious to see what everyone thinks of this. And I'm curious to see how this album does, commercially speaking, because... There have been some albums, I would say, over the past six months or so that have been just these huge, gigantic releases like uh, Midnight's by Taylor Swift, uh, SOS by SZA, Her Lost, Drake and 21 Savage, or Heroes and Villains with Metro Boomin. We just have these like huge, huge albums that still are killing it on the charts even now and have some big singles that are really popular right now. So I'm curious to see if and the summer vacation does that as well. If it 
reaches those heights uh, as far as a marketing standpoint. That's just the kind of stuff I think of. I know most people just listen to the album and then talk about it with their friends or whatever, which that's cool as well. Nothing wrong with that. But thank you all for watching. I do appreciate it. And I will see you all later. Peace out.